What questions do you want to ask me about Anthony Bourdain? Well, I wanted to talk to you about suicidal thoughts because you are out of the people that didn't kill themselves that I'm friends yeah. with. You are uh, <laughs> you the, a lot, huh? The one who knows the most about it, and you've you've experienced depression. Yeah, you know, and when I wasn't close with Anthony Bourdain, but I really liked him a lot. You knew him, you met him. When I met I, him with you once. Yeah, and when I hung out with him, I really enjoyed it. I did a show. We did uh, an episode of his show in Montana. We went camping together. And oh, really? Got fucked up by a campfire. Yeah, it was great. We had a great, great old time. Cool. It was really fun. But I was stunned when that happened. And uh, I mean, I don't. Uh, I just wanted to know, like, when you were at your worst, when you were having like really shitty feelings, like, what could have been anything that someone could have done that could have helped you? Oh yeah, I think about this too. I lost a friend to suicide, and it was like. Yeah, you want to stop and go like, what? What? What could you I have do? done, right? Yeah, you I know, mean, sometimes you just help. You got call. me into a therapist that fuck I couldn't afford. I mean, I've told you this before. I probably on here. That was like a physical thing you could do, but just getting me to go to accept like that maybe it'll work. Well, I I knew when I was talking to you that is a hard thing for you to talk about. So if you're bringing it up, it's a real, real issue. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're stoic. You're, yeah. You're you're not you don't complain about things. I don't like you're bothering not, people with my negative stuff. Just you don't. positive. So, I remember we were playing pool, and I was like, "What's the matter? Like, there's something going on." You sense it right? After yeah, a while. it was like you just seem like just unhappy, or and so once we got you into that psychiatrist, and then, dude, you popped out of that thing like a fucking spring. You and got you me went, on the right pills. Yeah, and you went running. Like anybody who thinks that pills are all bad. I don't think anything's all anything. Yeah. I think I know that's it. a black and white problem where there are people like I talked to Benji once. He was like, they're over prescribing pills. I'm like, they work for me. And he's like, well, I probably didn't. I'm like, no, no, no. Just because you think they're over prescribing doesn't mean they should never prescribe. Right. It's, it's, there's stuff that works. And sometimes it works enough for you to just change your way of looking at the world and change your reality. And then you eventually weaned yourself off of them, which is really interesting. Well, it's a sprain of the brain muscle is what's happened. Um, I don't, it's not like a physical, like pull like that. Um, but that's really what it is. Just a sprain. And so like, until you get off it, until you get on a cast of some way, it's going to be real hard for it to heal. Mm. You know, this is mm. like, so far this metaphor works. I'll no, tell, that does work. If I stop, but then, well, like, I think it works in the most effective cases like yeah, so, yours of medication. So these pills act as a cast. And then at some point you're healed and you don't need them anymore. But the problem is the only way to really know is if you just get off it and run on it. And then you're like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, I'm still hurt. Yeah. And during that <clears throat> get off and run on it time is when your suicidal thoughts shoot up yeah. if they were going to. So when they do wean you off, they're like, you need to keep up with me. Like any thought you get, you need to call me immediately. We'll yeah. get you right back on. Like, well, What was interesting with you is your weaning off coincided with huge success in your career. Yeah, I got off them. I know where I got off them. It was my second apartment in New York. So this was three and a half years ago, four years ago, maybe around there. So this is not happening. It's already on Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. so things are going things great. Things are going good. Your tour is kicking ass. Yeah. Everything's great. And then you, you- I released my first hour and then my second hour. Yeah, and um, you were a legit success. Yeah, you everything I billboards. dreamed of was getting. You were on billboards. Yeah, so beyond billboards. that, I was a- I mean, more importantly, was I was a working comic. I was like, oh, I can make a real living at this now yes. for the first time. So that was like the best part. Yeah. And that hadn't been going on very long. Right. Well, it was a hard, it's a fucking, people don't know. People don't know. It's a yeah. fucking crazy struggle. The struggle <laughs> from open micer to successful working comedian. And everybody's different. Everybody's got their own weirdness that they have, have to overcome. Yeah. But it's a long ass bloody struggle. That's you why, know? by the way, that's why I hate this infighting in comedy. It's terrible. When it's like, you're doing this wrong. You're talking just, it's like, guys, we're all up against the most monumental odds. Yeah. So you write safe, safe show jokes and this guy writes dick jokes. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like, whatever. That's just like predispositions, but like, it's hard. Mm -hmm. We're all in the same boat. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I agree, man. And and that that it didn't. It's very rarely been the case in the history of comedy that everybody 
kind of got along and just accepted the fact that everybody does things differently and not make not don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah, we don't have to have factions inside of our. Yeah, it's okay if group. you want to have a safe space show. I get it. Yeah, if people don't want to hear shit like that. It's okay. Have Do your whatever show. You want. Have your or, black night. Yeah. That's fine too. Have everything. People are just so everyone's defensive. Oh my everyone God. wants to hold their ground and stand up for their position on things. It's like okay. You're gonna be fine. Everyone's gonna be Everyone's fine. Gonna be fine. Just, it's the best time to be a comic. It's the best right time now. ever. It really is. Just kick ass. Just yeah. keep writing. Just go out there and do it. Um, yeah, and then it got better, but a lot of that was it. The focus I was able to get because of these. It was rem. Uh, no, no, not well butch. I try well butchin. The problem is some of these pills, like the side effects, are not worth it. Mm. So what I tell people, like, you, someone had a problem once of like anxiety. Um, Yusuf, I don't care about this shit. It's Nick Yusuf. And, um, and uh, he's right now planning on bombing an embassy. Um, and it was like he didn't want to go on it because he was afraid it would make him like a zombie. And I'm like, okay, if it does, just go back off it. So you don't have to commit forever. Right. You know what I mean? Just see what the effects are. So on, I think, well, uh, I couldn't come. Oh. It was fresh. And, it, and, it, and I, I wouldn't even say it was any sort of psychopathic thing because I didn't know about that as a side effect until that was happening with my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, what the fuck? It was like three times in a row. It was like, I just couldn't come. Oof. And then she was like, oh, maybe it's those pills. I'm like, why? Really? And then I looked. And I was like, oh, yeah. It's fucking annoying. It's yes. an annoying thing. That's super annoying. Uh, there was this one called Remoron. Wait, you think about like how many circuits there are. So much in there. So, so much in there. And they'll think of something that gets in there and fixes this. We're like, yeah, I want to take that away, that yeah. cum thing. Oh. It's like you edit your own computer code. Oh, my code. God. Like by taking those, it's almost like you edit your own opera. Remember when yeah. you have a, a PC, you could get into DOS. Defrag it. Do shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost like what you're doing. So the side effect on Remoron. And these side effects don't hit everybody the same. And what you're looking to fill in isn't it all the same. So don't just get what somebody else gets. You got to wow. talk to a therapist. But like Remeron gave me hyperphagia, oh. which is the inability to be feel full. Whoa. So they said expect to gain 15% of your body weight. Uh, and I could eat, dude, if I got high, I could eat like eight plates of spaghetti. I mean, I would eat out my whole apartment. Holy shit. Everything. It got to the point where I was like, well, I got one bagel left, some peanut butter, and some, a little bit of Cheerios. And fucking let's do this. It was it was glorious, but that it wasn't helping me. That was a problem. That was a side effect because I was thin then. I could have dealt with. I could be fifteen pounds overweight instead of ten pounds underweight, but like, it didn't help me mentally. Mm, so then it's like sense. fuck. Um, and then I finally got on one disipramine that was like, then it worked. I was like, boom, I'm out. I get it. I'm free now a little bit. Um, but low blood pressure. So sometimes I stayed up. Ooh. I got to hold on to something. Ooh. And like it's not fucking faint but it barely ever happens totally worth it hmm. and that still happens now when i get high ah. but like do you get like dizzy lightheaded yeah i stand up i'm like oh hold on you gotta get real high with for that to happen yeah right? or early or something like that or if i'm getting sick that'll happen but i used to get that in high school too oh. i think i'm already predisposed to it but it made it a little worse not not a big deal though so i finally found the one that worked for me but it's hard and if you're not having it your brain is lying to you or it's giving you a version of reality that's like I mean, I saw this last night coming home from the um, airport, from Burbank Airport, and some lady picked up in an Uber, picked up a guy on the wrong side of the fence. And she goes, sorry, it's my first time here, but like, it's one of those little fences you can just step over almost, you know? And he's like, well, everyone else is going here. And she's like, yeah, sorry, it's my first time at the Burbank Airport. I can, and, and you could have walked 10 seconds to where it's an opening. Mm. And he's lying, he's like, pop the trunk, pop the trunk, please. And I'm like, oh, you're cranky from flying. I know yeah. what that is. Yeah. And so your version of this reality is this is a way worse thing than it really is. Yeah. Steve Simone, who never gets upset, would just be like, hey, no big deal, I'll just come around. Yeah. And, and then it's over. Yeah. It's the same thing with talking to Fitzsimmons. Like, you can just not punch somebody and then forget about it. Yeah. But, you know, if you're, if you're thinking that angrily all the time, it really affects you. And this shit makes you think the worst of everything. Wow. It's like, yeah, no matter what it is, it's a little worse than it should be. And, you know, That's you, an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, and it just gets tiring after a while. And the suicidal thoughts start happening when you're like, I can't do this anymore. You know? Is it? It's effort. It's mental effort to just like, oh, it just keeps, it's like you got a rock on you that you're pulling up, pushing off you at all times. And you just need the game to be over. You just need to sleep. Theo Vaughn used to have a bit about it. I think he probably did a special or something by now, but it was like, 
You ever want that deep sleep? That deep sleep. Like that's <laughs> what it is, where you just want to sleep forever. You just weighed down by it all the time. Yeah, it's like you know how they used to like um, get people to give false confessions by just keeping them awake for like thirty straight hours. Yeah, like, until they eventually like they, they don't know how to say no. The fine, I did it, and stuff they did, didn't do. They weren't anywhere near it. Yeah, but they're just saying yes, I murdered somebody. Let me sleep. It's just a version of that, you know, where you're just like, you're just so sick of it after a while. Oh, I will tell you that they, I have read about it and they say the people who talk about suicide are sort of different than the people who are thinking about it quietly. Ooh, Thinking Jesus. quietly is way, way more often to commit it. Um, I think they say the people talking about it is a way to seek help. So what can you do? The question was, what can you do to help people? Is there anything that anybody could have done? No, it used to make me mad when you told me just get out of bed, do some exercise. I was like, I was like, you don't get it, you don't get it. I definitely don't get it. Yeah, Chandra understood it once. She was like, talking about that. She was like, I, he doesn't understand. You can't even go to your fridge. Like exercise is not even. It's just so far from like no, no way. Mm. Like it couldn't even get out of bed. What do you think was you, you were also taking Propecia then? Do you uh -huh. think it had anything to do with it? Because it's one it of the might have, man. I for sure might have. I mean, it was right around then. And I think I'm trying to think um, if I was quitting right then on it and switching to the the fucking spread. Um, come on, stem cell research, <laughs> um, <laughs> or what? But I think it was either on it or 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 getting off it. Yeah, for sure, for sure, could have had something to do with that. Yeah, I think so too. It was also um, a live-in girl. I mean, there was so many things right around that. So all it takes is a sprain. So like, here's a weird thing. Let's say you lost your job, and that sends you into depression. It's not that it's not related to something. A lot of times, it will be related to something. A mom dies, or dad dies. But let's say the job uh, situation, because you can change this. Right. If your dad dies, you'll never get him back. You know, it feels bad, and so like it should feel bad. You lose your job, you go into depression. But now you get a better job. You know what I mean? Not right. that you will, but let's just say you did. The depression remains. The cause of the depression is necessarily gone. You're doing better than the thing that made you depressed. But you're still depressed. Because that brain is sprained. Oh. So you need a way to fight it. And pills don't work for everybody. So it's fucking disheartening and getting the right pill. I had a therapist say, well, I was like, this, this one pill's not working. She goes, well, I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, and in my head, I was just like, okay, I accept it. I'll work up the courage eventually, and that'll be the end of it. I was like, well, I'm not going to fight you on it. Yeah, I don't want to fight this in the first place. It's not going to work. Oh, she was the worst. What was it like to get pulled out of the clouds? Like when the pills that when you the took pills started, started working? working. At first, it, it's like you don't trust that it's gone. It's like right when the hiccups leave. Mm -hmm. You still feel like you have the hiccups, right? you know, but like a way longer version of that. And then what happens weird is you start to miss it because it became so much of your reality and who you were that like it's this thing that's been pulled away from you. A part of you is gone. Hmm. So it's weird that you like miss this horrible way of being um, because you had to figure out a way to like make a positive of this. And you see this a lot in like PC culture. We start sort of not bragging about your victimization or the things that have happened to you, but like it's a way to stand out mm. and be a special. So then you end up propping the, the, the negative up instead of, instead of saying, yeah, that was shitty. You know, mm. you start almost like bragging about it. Um, right. So you start feeling like, well, at least I'm different. So that can prop you up a little. At least I'm unique in this thing of like, doesn't seem like anyone else is having these suicidal thoughts, you know? Um, it's almost like if you're only, the only one into a band, you feel better than if everyone else is into that same band. The band is, the album is the album, but you like it more because you're the only one. Right, right, so you right. You start noticing your own uniqueness. It's like, so, so maybe it was that, I'm not really sure, but when I was out of it, I was missing it a little bit. And then followed by a fear that it's going to come back because regular, de okay, it's, it's a terrible word, depression, because it also means just, oh, I'm depressed today. Right. Clinical right. depression is different, but overlaps. You know, it doesn't just go away. Right. If I'm depressed because I'm cranky, I got to tell myself, don't be cranky. Say five things you're thankful for. You should be out of it. Get some sunshine. You're fine. This is like deeper. So like, then when you do get depressed, like, let's just say I haven't been outside all day. It's been raining for two straight days. 
You know, you're just a little like blue. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh fuck, is it back? You know? And then when it's gone in a day, you're like, oh thank God. But when it's like two days, like fuck, fuck, fuck. Don't come back. Wow. Yeah, but the, the so a bad like a bad weather day could set it off a little bit. No, that just gives like the normal depression that everybody gets. Right. That's I think there really should be two separate terms: feeling right. blue, feeling blue. Yeah, which like, you all you get. Yeah. If I haven't been on stage in four days, I feel a little blue. If I if I I don't know if I haven't got my underwear out all day. That's why you can't live in Vancouver. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those people get depressed. They don't get outside in Seattle. They don't get outside. Well, they get outside, but they get rained on. Yeah, so it's just like ugh, you're just feeling down. I remember when Duncan and I were filming something up there when we were doing that Bigfoot, Bigfoot episode, uh -huh. and we were talking to this guy who was a cop who was like the security guy for the set, and uh, he was like, dude, it fucking wears on you. Yeah. He, was, he was at the end of like the rainy season. It was just starting to get warm again. It wears on you. That New York, my first New York winter was this one, and it, I, it, it wasn't so much middle of March where I was like, whatever, I could, I could take it. I took the winter. Yeah. It was middle of April Ugh. where I'm like, enough already. I put enough. in the three or four months. Oh. So Wait, the you question could do is, what like, you want though? What the thing is, you could do what you want. You could leave. Yeah, I could leave. I went skiing a lot of sixteen yeah. days of skiing this there year. You go. Went did that around like road dates. That's what's crazy about like somewhere like Denver. Uh -huh. Like it's sunny. Sunny. It's great. It's great. It's yeah. so much better when it's sunny. It's cold out, but it's it's sunny. Like if you have to pick warm and cloudy all the time or cold and sunny, I take cold and sunny all day long. So, yeah, for sure. All day for long. For sure. Sunny, sunny. Yeah, sunny. skiing outside in the sun when it's like, oh, it's Dude. great. It's 25 degrees, but it's Just beautiful. Just even walking around. Yeah, it's brisk out, but look how pretty the sky is. Blue blue sky and fluffy clouds. Did you know Anthony Bourdain was, was depressed? No. I heard with him a little it was a mixture of mixing drugs, mixing pills and, and alcohol he or could mixing have been, whatever. I, be I believe he was on some sort of malaria medication, which is dangerous. It gave some people um Gets people amnesia. violent. <laughs> People get violent. I've seen people on malaria medication while they were drinking. And uh, I had to hold a guy back from attacking a wow. reporter. Or wow. I was at least worried about him attacking a reporter wow. once. It was a friend of mine. It was a very kind friend of mine who I don't think would ever, in, in normal life, attack a person physically. Right. And it seemed like he was about so to it attack makes, Yeah, it makes you think not even normal. He was squirrely. Um, it was he had to go to Africa. He had a, he had a um, visit somewhere in Africa, and he had to take these pills. Yeah. And some of them have violent reactions to people. You're not supposed to drink on them, first of all. And he was drinking. It's mixing. Yeah. And you know, if that's what he was doing, and if he's mixing that with alcohol, who fucking knows? So that could have happened with Bourdain, where it might not have been long term depression. But I know they, there's studies on people who got a concussion in football practice and then hung themselves that night. Oh with, yeah, with no history of it. Mm -hmm. But right then, everything. I mean, it's almost like you're on psychedelics, yeah. where this new reality is real, it feels real. Whew. So I, the question is: Is there something you could have done? To, I, I don't know. I don't know what the right, I've thought about it. I don't know what the right thing is because you, you push away people's help. Right. I saw somebody post this on Facebook once where it was like one of the worst things about depression is everybody going, yeah, I've been through that too. It's like, now I'm not even unique. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Give me my props for my individual suffering. Yeah, so then it's like you want to help by somebody saying, yeah, I've been through this, but it's like yeah. it's not even helping them, but like... Mm. It's, and who the fuck knows what they're feeling, right? That's the other thing about a person's feelings, what they're feeling. It's very personal. Exactly. It's almost impossible to describe. Oh, by the way, I had moderate depression. That's what that therapist said. What you saw was moderate depression. Jesus. I don't know what severe depression looks like. Jesus. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I lost somebody too, and I don't know if I could have like said something or, or like. You know, um, Anthony liked to drink. He drank a lot. Yeah. And uh, watching him over the last four years, like you could see, he, he he'd seemed like he had been living a hard life, you know? Right. Like he, he looked like it on television, too. Like he'd been living a hard life. I mean, he was out there hitting it, traveling from country to country constantly, drinking constantly. Alcohol is a depressant. I mean, it just is. If you drink alcohol all the time, you're not going to come out of it with a sunny disposition. Right. It is a depressant. It is a depressant. I mean, you can definitely do it and pull it off, and we do. And, you know, occasionally you'll have a couple of drinks, and then the next day you won't. But if you're doing that all the time, if you're doing it every day, if you're so, doing it five days a yeah. week. A lot of people oof. use that because it's a short-term relief from depression, mm -hmm. long-term depressant. 
Yeah. So a lot of people use alcoholism to cover up the depression. And then when they get clean, suddenly all the shit they're supposed to have been dealing with is now still there and not being covered up by alcohol. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I, there's I like know. a fun that comes with a couple of drinks. The f- there's a fuck yeah, it. Absolutely. It's fun. Fuck it. Let's stop worrying. Yeah. It depends how addicted yeah. you get. I, I can't. I wish I could do that with cigarettes when everybody's smoking. But yeah. I'll go right back to a pack. So do you, do, do you, do you think like, fuck, what could I have done? No. Because I wasn't close enough right, to him, right. and I wasn't there. If I was there, I would be tortured by it. Yeah. If I was there and I was hanging out with him, and it happened in I his hotel room that see you tomorrow, night, and then he, I, I would have been tortured by yeah, it. Yeah. I would then with anybody, you know. Yeah. It's just such a crazy decision to make. The it's, decision to yeah. just stop living when so many people loved you, and you have this crazy life that uh, it's the most bravest, people would the dream bravest of. thing to me. Yeah, I can't imagine end. something. It's it's that's the only thing that held me back is just the lack of courage to be like, just do it. And it's like, but, but stop your, and your think DNA about you. is telling you. But stop and think about you. What you from not doing that, you become wildly successful. Yeah, and, and happier. And, yeah, and way happier. And you're yeah. you're having a great fucking time. I'm having a great time, dude. But, I have the architect of my own happiness, and yeah. it is fucking. I'm doing it well. You <laughs> are, man. Myself. You're doing it the way you're supposed to do it. But you're, you know, you've been doing it like this for several years now. And if mm-hmm. you I guess it really doesn't matter in the end. But if you end your own life, you would have never experienced all this. True. I what mean, if you had to go point, back though. and do it again? It's interesting. You were at like a tipping point, man. You are this like weird tipping point. And mm-hmm. then you just went that way and you're free. It just took a while. It was Sliding definitely doors. a struggle. But you, you were free. I find what, when talking to comics, other comics, because now I feel a little guilty, you know, for success around, around people that are also quite funny mm. who don't have it. And what I found is that it's, you get this frustrating point right around eight, nine, 10, 12 years of comedy where like your skills have gotten better and your monetary career has not gotten better. Mm. So your artistic career is booming and then you're just not even making a living. And it's the most frustrating because like I'm finally good. At open mic level, if I can make a good joke, that's a win on its own. Yeah. I made a good joke tonight, this week, or one time this month, you know, but like, there it's like i'm doing so well on stage i'm killing why am i why am i still working this day job why am i not even ever on tv why am i you know mm-hmm. and it's real frustrating might have been around that time too where i was getting frustrated with like you know i was yeah. less hacky but mm-hmm. also just not succeeding yeah isn't it interesting how the internet just changed everything or for you can support people so much easier before yeah. it was like you had the man show you could hire a writer mm-hmm. and that's it. That's the only help you could do for someone. Yeah. You know, take a couple people on the road with you. Yeah. But that's now it's like, enough. hey, go watch this guy's show. Yeah. Hey, hey, this guy's got a new special. Hey, check out so and so. Tom everything. Papa's got a new book, you know? Changes everything. Yeah. And people are like, oh, and it's, and it's literally no skin off your back. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Well, it's great. Yeah. It actually, it's good. Like, I, if Tom Papa asked me to promote something he's doing, I want people to go see him. It's yeah. good. It's good for me. I want him to do good because I like listening to him. I like watching him. So I, yeah. I want him to make more comedy. Oh, yeah. yeah then you win because I get yeah. to see you more. You're I get to fail see out. more comedy. Yeah, yeah. A good and person gets to stay in it. Not that he needs us. but I. And also with Tom, when you tell people about someone who's really funny, whether it's you or whoever it is, then they trust you. They yeah, go, right, oh, I went to right. see that guy. He's a fucking hilarious. Oh, it's the best. It's like, the best. They know that you're telling the truth. Like, if I tell them, hey, Joey Diaz is the funniest guy that's ever lived, and you go see him at the Ice House one night and come out of it, and you're, you're bleeding yeah. from your, your internal bruising from yeah. laughing. I love guaranteeing people on Twitter or whatever. It's like, you don't know. I guarantee you will have a great night. This is someone who's an awesome yeah. comic. Just, yeah. tr- just, there's no like, well, my friend. It's like, just, they'll be great. Yeah. There's, there's people that you could do that with, but. Yeah. There was not, you know, before it was like, you got on The Tonight Show. You know, you did a set Dude, on The Tonight Show. Times, you got I on hope. Letterman. People talked about you had to build up places. You had to travel to places all the time so those people would come back. Yeah. And every time they came back, you better have some new shit. Dude, I really got to think about it. i like, when you start seeing that depression of people, like, what can you what do? What can I do, anybody do? Is there anything anybody can do? It's like just a little bit like being there for you sometimes is like, helpful just be like hey man you're just you're a good friend i know you're going through something but just know that i like you I, just like a little bit and don't require anything of them mm. but i guess everybody would be different too but like i don't know i don't know <sighs> everybody's on a different trip that's the thing it's like no one knows what anyone is feeling telling somebody to get over it is not the way to do it that's uh, that ain't gonna help 
the tough love thing is like that doesn't that, work. That works for fucking nothing. I don't know what it works for, but not that. It works for lazy people. Yeah, exactly. And I don't Get even think it works for them. I don't even think it works for them. I think that gets people to move sometimes, but it doesn't change the way they think about what they're doing. They just get forced into doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's, that's not... like the argument. Well, it's actually not like that, what I was going to say. <laughs> but it's, it's you you want them to act, and so they act because of force of your, your will. You're, right, you're right. You're trying but to not because scare they're, them. They're into it. Yeah, but if you inspire someone and say to them, listen, I know you're looking at it this way, but this is why this is going to hurt you by approaching it this way. And you're going to do the same thing. But instead of approaching it the way you're approaching it, stop and just for a shift of perspective, think about it in a positive way. Like you could do that to people and sometimes you can actually shift yeah. the way they look at something. Because a lot of times it's the way you're approaching yeah. something that's pissing you off about it. Right. And the way to get through sometimes to people is not to tell them this is the way you should do it, but just to paint the picture and let them make their own decision. Yeah. To be like, oh, so you're happy when you run? Yeah. Okay. Is it is it warm out? Oh, it is? Okay. I and mean, you're less happy when you don't run. All right. Well. It was like instead of like you got to get out there and run. I you know I have kids and in raising yeah. kids. One of the things that I learned that works really good is anytime they do anything, I tell them I fucked up way worse than you. I don't use the word fucked up, right. but I said whatever you've done, I've messed up way more. Like I everybody so messes don't get up. Defensive about yeah, it. don't worry about it. This is a part of being a kid, and I'm super proud of you for admitting that you made a mistake or that you did this. This is great because this is how you learn. You're not supposed to know everything. You're eight years old or you're 10 years old. You're, you're supposed to be learning learning about life and supposed, people are supposed to be talking to you about various things you encounter. You're not supposed to already know everything. You're a yeah. little kid. This is great. So we learn something that we don't want to do anymore. This is great. This is an, an awesome opportunity. And nobody, I wish somebody talked to me like that and I'll tell them that too. I go, because I get called stupid and yelled at or whatever, whatever the fuck it was when I did something. That's how people talk to kids back then. They didn't, you know, it's not any, even anybody's fault. If someone does something dumb, you know, in the 1960s or something like that, they threw things at them. You know, like my, my parents would tell me about things flying across the room <laughs> at them. Yeah. You know, like people they, stop. They just fucking, they little, the kids were animals back then too. They, yeah. You know, people were different. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it might be that. Like something to help me, I don't know if people are listening or they're going through it or whatever, but like some things that have helped that I was able to take was I had one therapist that said one good thing where he's like, I'm, imagine the good things out of the depression. Yeah. Instead of looking at it as only negative, um, what's it helped you with? And then I was like, well, all right, I'll try that. And I was like, I'm looking at my stand up material more realistically and darker, and that's actually helpful mm. on stage. And he's like, all right, cool. That's one good thing out of this. And then it just like sort of, it might just help you like, it's not all bad. Adjust the way you approach it. Yeah. Another thing was say five things. And just in the shower, whenever you do shower, say five things out loud that you're thankful for. Doesn't have to be monumental stuff. Mm. Just like it's 75 today. That's good. Um, I got a new bar of soap. That's cool. Um, uh, my friend John, you know, whatever. Right. I like him. That's cool. I'm glad I have that in my life. Just five things. Just say it out loud. And then after a while, sometimes that, that, that ended up like affecting my mood. Hmm. You know? Where instead of, because fo- that was the problem was the focus. I don't know if I ever told you this. Focus was, on negative things. Yeah. So it'd be like a 75 degree day. This is the example I use a lot. 75 degrees and sunny. It's fucking every day in LA. You know? And I would be like, instead of going like, this is fucking rad. It's February, you know, 12th. And I'm fucking in shorts. This is great. Instead of focusing on that, I would focus on like, fuck, I got, I got, my car has no gas. I got to fucking go get gas. I hate having to fucking get gas. You got to pull over. And so then I'm only focusing on this fucking one minute chore yeah. that I have to do instead of on all the good stuff. And so yeah. you just focus, it just makes you focus on this negative and you just like can't pull out of it. So anything you can do to like shift the focus to the positive is helpful. 